Welcome to Electron lecture online. Here's another example of how to solve a non-homogeneous differential equation using the Laplace transform. Now notice here that the driving function is 2e to the minus t. It's an exponential function. It's a decaying exponential function. And we have two initial conditions for the function at 0 and for the derivative of the function at 0. All right, the approach is still the same. We're going to take the Laplace transform of both sides of the equation, starting with y double prime. So that becomes s squared times the Laplace transform of the function minus s times the function evaluated at 0 minus the derivative of the function evaluated at 0. This is the Laplace transform of y double prime plus 4 times the Laplace transform of y prime, which is s times the Laplace transform of y, minus the function evaluated at 0. Of course, all of that is to multiply times the coefficient 4, and then we get plus 4 times the Laplace transform of y, which is simply this, which equals the Laplace transform of the right side, so we write 2 times and the Laplace transform of e to the minus t, that would be 1 over s plus 1. So now that we've taken the Laplace transform of both sides, we want to factor out the Laplace transform of y with all the coefficients on the left side. So we can say the Laplace transform of y times, we have an s squared over here, we have a 4 times s over here, and we have a 4 over here. And we also have minus s times y evaluate 0, which is 2. So let me write a minus 2s. And here we have a minus 2. And we have here, again, we have a minus 2 multiplied times 4, which is minus 8. And that equals 2 divided over s plus 1. And what we can do next is we can factor this and we can move this over to the other side. So we have the Laplace transform of y times s plus 2 squared, because, yep, that's s plus 2 squared, equals 2 over s plus 1. And then we move this over to the other side. The minus 2s becomes a plus 2s, and the minus 10 becomes a plus 10. So now the first thing you want to do is write all this over a common denominator, which means we're going to multiply this times this to write over a single denominator. So we could say that the Laplace transform of y times s plus 2 squared is equal to 2 plus, and here we have 2s plus 10, multiplied times s plus 1, all written over s plus 1, like this. And finally, we can combine all that and write it, this in the denominator, so the Laplace transform of y is equal to, so we have 2s squared in the numerator, 2 plus 10, which is plus 12s, and that would be plus 10 plus 2 is plus 12, all divided by s plus 1, and s plus 2 quantity squared. Now that we have that, we can say we can write that in terms of partial fractions because it would be very difficult to take the inverse Laplace transform of this, but it can be made simpler by saying this can be written as a over s plus 1 plus b over s plus 2 plus c over s plus 2 quantity squared. So now all we have to do is solve for the values a, b, and c, which can be done by multiplying both sides. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at this right here. And we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by this denominator right here, which means on the left side, we end up with 2s squared plus 12s plus 12 equals, on the right side, we end up with a times s plus 2 squared plus b, times s plus 1 times s plus 2, plus c times simply s plus 1. Next, what we're going to do is multiplying all that out so we can compare the left side to the right side. So here we have 2s squared plus 12s 
plus 12 is equal to, when we multiply this out, we end up with s squared plus 4s plus 4. So we have an a s squared, so we have a plus b quantity times s squared, plus, for the middle term, we have a 4s over here, we have um, a 3s over here, and we have a single s over there, so we could say that 4a plus 3b plus c times s. So if I take the s term each over here, we have a cs over here. We have multiplied that out, we get 2s plus 1s is 3s, so 3 times b. And here we have a 4s in the middle, so 4 times a. All that multiplies times s must equal 12s over here. And finally, to get the, the final term, we have a 4a plus 2b plus c. All this, this quantity right here, these three terms together here, should equal 12. So now I can go ahead and write up the three equations. I know that a plus b must equal 2. I know that 4a, 4a plus 3b plus c must equal 12. So the coefficient of s on the right side must equal to the coefficient on the left side. And finally, I have 4a plus 2b plus c must also equal 12 right here. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take, take the first equation, solve for a in terms of b. So we're going to write that a is equal to 2 minus b. So let's do that. We're going to take that and plug that into the other two equations to, to get rid of the a. That means we end up with 4 times 2 minus b plus 3b plus c equals 12. And we have 4 times 2 minus b plus 2b plus c equals 12. Now, what that, when I look at this, notice that those two equations are identical except that the b changes. 4a plus 3b plus c equals 12, and 4a plus 2b plus c equals 12. So it doesn't matter how many b's we have, we always get 12. From that, I should be able to conclude that b must be equal to 0. If b is equal to 0, then we know that a must be equal to 2. And if a is 2 and b is 0, we should be able to solve for c here somewhere. Let's take one of these two equations and let's solve it for c. So here we have 4 times a. So I'll take this equation, come all the way over here. And I got 4 times a, but a is equal to 2. So we got 4 times 2 plus 0 for b plus c is equal to 12. And 4 times 2 is 8, so subtract 8 from both sides, we end up with c is equal to 4. All right, so now we have values for a, b, and c. We can now plug that into here, and now we can say that the Laplace transform of the function y, which is what we're looking for, is equal to a divided by s plus 1, but a is equal to 2, so we get 2 over s plus 1, plus b, which is 0, so 0 over s plus 2, so that term drops out, plus c, which is 4, divided by s plus 2 squared. And all we have to do is find the inverse Laplace transform of that, and we get the value for the function. So the inverse Laplace transform of what we have left here, which is 2 over s plus 1, plus 4 over s plus 2 quantity squared. Let's close the bracket here which means, this is y is equal to that, which means that y is equal to 2 times 1 over s plus 1. So 1 over s is the unit step function, but the plus 1 means that we have an e to the minus t term there. Plus 4 times 1 over s squared is equal to t, and then the plus 2 means that we have an e to the minus 2t. And for good measure, we should also put in the unit step function over here because this ensures that t has, or the function has no value for values for t less than zero, which means we can take out the u of t and we can write that y is equal to two times the unit step function, this, 
and then we multiply that times e to the minus t plus 2t e to the minus 2t. And this would be the most compact form to write the answer to our differential equation. Again, this simply ensures that for values less than zero for t, you get no value, you get zero. And for values for t greater than zero, you have two times one times what's inside the brackets here. And that's the solution to this non-homogeneous differential equation.